Brett Okamoto here with ESPN alongside, uh, well, not alongside, kind of alongside UFC lightweight Justin Gaethje. And it kind of feels like Groundhog's Day, man. It feels like we did this a week ago, talked about this fight, then the fight went away, and now here we are talking about it again. So just real quickly, the time frame of this, you first found out that the UFC wanted you to fight Tony Gaethje in kind of late March, right? Early April? Yeah, it was like, I think it was 19 or 20 days before the fight. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Months, so, months. so you, you immediately jumped into camp after having a conversation with Trevor Whitman. And then uh, on April 9th, no, on April, yes, on April 9th, they canceled the card. So yeah. can, you, can you let us know, like, like from, your, from your point of view, did you know that the card was in jeopardy? Did you know it was getting canceled? What, what, where were you at when you found that out? Man, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard as a fighter to find out information on the internet, but that's essentially how I find out everything. I was downstairs. I had just got a sauna uh, put in my house. I was putting it together, and I walked upstairs, and someone was like, did you hear that, or did you see this? And I was like, what? They're like, your fight's off. And I was like, shut the f let me call my oh, shut the heck up let me call my manager and i call him and he's like yeah it's off so it's like such a like emotionally as a fighter it's very hard to cope with you know because it's it's hard to turn it on and it's hard to turn it off so i was really caught you know in a weird predicament um i'm glad it was only three days three four days after they canceled it where they where they re re-announced it and i also found out that i was fighting again on the internet and so it was tough um you know, I, I kind of definitely let my foot off the gas uh, for three days, but it was ultimately it helped me because I had gone like 14 when – I, when I got the call, I went 14 days straight. I didn't take a day off. I didn't take my Sunday off. Uh, so I was really feeling, feeling beat down. And so those three days really helped me. Um, ultimately, I'm not going to get my training camp, but, you know, I'm going to get more time, and I have to be thankful for that. Yeah. When you say you, you took the foot off the gas, what does that mean? I mean, because for, for different guys, that means different things. Like they go straight to a fast food joint, you know, and, and, and load yeah, up on something. Yeah, that's what I did. That's <laughs> what I did. I ordered Pizza Hut for breakfast, had ice cream for lunch. Yeah. Only two, I only did it for two days. Um, didn't help my weight, but I was happy. Huh. Do you, uh, I mean, what was your feeling initially at you put it into words the the emotions of like you've you've trained for 11 days and you got this opportunity of fighting for a world title and then all of a sudden your buddy tells you it's, the fight's canceled like like what went through your your mind so, at that point so in that position for me it was really weird because you know it was like um it was the saddest most relieving thing i you know i've ever experienced you know i really wanted to but once i turned it on you know i was i was all in and then when they called it off it was kind of a relief because essentially I wasn't getting the time I needed or wanted. Uh, it wasn't the circumstances that I preferred. But, you know, I, uh, luckily I've been, I've been training and sparring. So my body, wasn't, my body wasn't bad. I was able to get down to 67, 68, no problem. That day we talked, that was like 10 days after I started working. Wow. So I've really, um, like I said, I was telling myself all year, I was like, you're going to fight again and it's going to be huge. So, you know, don't let it get, don't, don't go, don't get out of shape. I wanted to be at a point where if I was going to go into camp, I wanted to be in shape, not take the first three weeks to get in shape, to be able to put my body through where I needed to put it through. So I was very fortunate to, uh, to have, you know, in hindsight, it was very, very preferred. That is actually crazy, man, because I remember you telling me that earlier this year that I, I just, I know what fight I get next is going to be a really big one. And at the time I was like, yeah, I mean, Hopefully, hopefully, but there was just no certainty. Everything was so yeah. in the air. No one knew who was going to fight anybody. You must have had some type of premonition that this was this was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, when you're the main event in the UFC, it's a huge fight. It doesn't really matter who you're fighting. And five out of six times, they've built me as the main main event. I've headlined for some, you know, some of the. It's crazy, you know. Like if you go back to when I fought Dustin Poirier and headlined that card, you know, Izzy was on that card. Um, it's just crazy. Um, the the respect I, I got from the UFC and the opportunities that they're allowing me to you know being in the being in the main event they don't they don't give that to anybody and um, you know humans recognize effort I'll say it a million times because it's so true and they they know that I give max effort and really what more can you expect from someone that you're paying money to yeah so so four days after the cancellation you, you have some pizza and some ice cream and then and then how did you find out that the fight was back on same way I found that it was off on the internet yeah. um. 
I saw that Dana had said that he was having this card made night when I was the main event. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was, I was really, you know, to be honest with you, I was, I was a little bit upset um, because I've always told them I don't want to fight on short training camps. And uh-huh. they, you know, and I don't blame them, but they had the assumption that because I was going to do it April 18th, I would be fine to do it May 9th. But, you know, those are totally different circumstances for me. And so I really, I really wasn't happy about it. But you go back to the drawing board and, you know, risk versus reward. For a, for a world title, you fight on a day. You know, a day's mm-hmm. notice. It doesn't matter. We're only here for one thing, and a fight's a fight. Tony's a very different breed of, of fighter, and, you know, his cardio is, is great. So for a fight like that, you really, you know, it's, it's all about having the confidence to step in there. Uh, and that's all, for me, that's all comes from preparation. If I can prepare, then ultimately I don't care what happens. You know, I know that I will give max effort because I do every time. But, yeah, I was, uh, I was a little upset that, you know, for one, they didn't ask me. They just kind of, they just kind of announced it, and it kind of puts pressure on us. You know, just, just a little bit of respect, you know, would be great. Hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you understand, like, like, why it happens like that sometimes? And maybe they're afraid of leaks, or maybe they, do. they don't want people to know that they're going to go on May 9th? Or do you think that that's, like, like those yeah. are all, forget I mean, it. So they, they still owe you the respect to so when I, have, when, I, when I have those thoughts, it's like, you know, very spur of the moment. You know, I don't have time to, to rethink or think about what my reaction is going to be. It's kind of, you know, on the fly. As a matter of fact, when they called me and told me, I just blew a tire. I was changing a tire on the side of the highway, on the freeway. Really? And they called me, so I was all fired up. My manager was like, dude, why are you mad at me? I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I'm and then, uh, but then like, you know, two hours later, I was like, I called him back. I was like, okay, I mean. Uh, so, 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 so how do you jump back into the process of, of preparing for the fight and what has your camp looked like? I mean, obviously everybody knows these are unique circumstances. So how, have, how have you gone about sort of building yeah, your camp you know, for this fight? I mean, I, I mean, nothing's changed for me. I, I never trained other than when I went to spawn with my whole team, there was like 20, 30 people in there. But if it's just my training partners, there's like six of us, you know, and, and two coaches. So, uh, I think I said it in the interview last time. Um, there's a few ways I can die, and the most surest and fastest way for me right now is to not be prepared for a fight and to go in there and and do and fight. So for me, um, I have I can't take shortcuts. I can't uh, not have teammates here. I can't, you know, I've, I've Kamaru Usman's here, Benil Dariush is here, um, and we're all isolated in my house. So you know, we're working out together for the next week and a half, and then. And I got great training partners here. Drew Dober, he's on, he's, you know, they got him ready for a fight. So he's getting ready for a fight. Um, Neil Magny, he's in here. He, that fool's always in shape. So, mm-hmm. you know, he could push, push the pace. I just need people to push the pace right now. I just had a great wrestling practice. Uh, I got my ass kicked and it was great. <laughs> Last time we talked, uh, you gave me a really honest answer. I said, you know, you don't like to take short notice fights. But, you know, what, what percentage of Justin Gaethje will we see when, when, when you go in and fight him on April 18th at that time? Yeah. And you said 95% that you would give 18 minutes of hell. So given this, given this additional time, are we going to – how close of a 100% Justin Gaethje are we going to see now that you've got a, got a few more weeks? Uh, so with that, you'll see 100% mentally Justin Gaethje. Physically, you know, we're still going to be floating around 95 97%. I mean, uh, ultimately, I was probably trying to – I was probably not being as truthful with you. It would have been 85, 90% if we're really, you know, I just, but for, for a fighter, you have to tell yourself that you have it, that you yeah. won't, that, that, you know, I've, ultimately I've been working since I was four years old for this. There's going to be very few people that have worked as long and as hard as me. Um, I always had a, my parents, no matter what season it was, football, baseball, soccer, swimming, wrestling, I had to practice that day. And sometimes I had wrestling and soccer practice or swimming practice in the morning, football practice at night. So I, every single day I've had a schedule uh, since I was four years old. Um, I would say maybe two years out of that I've been kind of where I didn't have to have a commitment. I never once didn't play a sport after school. You know, I never got to go home and do nothing after school. So um, all that hard work is, is what I have to rely on when it comes to a situation like this. When you have a shortened camp, though, there's certain things that you just have to prioritize and be like, you know what, 
some of these things I would have absolutely done in a longer camp, but I just don't have a longer camp. So I'm going to have to remove those and put more emphasis on some other things. It, it is, do you have to prioritize a little bit in a short camp? And so I've been, as an athlete, it's, it's on or off, you know, green light, red light. And I really trust the people that I put around me, my coaches, um, you know, Trevor, my strength and conditioning coaches, uh, all these here helping me with my jujitsu. So I really have to trust that they're formulating a plan that will give, get me 100% prepared. I've never worried about a game plan. I've never asked if there's a game plan. Trevor instills something, and then I go out there and I fight. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, you've been working on this. You know, yeah. but for me, it's like uh, I really trust the people that, I, that, that are leading me to, to be ready for a fight. So, if, you know, with that comes confidence. With confidence comes – you know, comes the ability to, to put into action. Yeah. Sitting here on April 22nd, I believe it is, Wednesday, April 22nd, how confident are you that you will ab- actually fight Tony Ferguson on May 9th? I have to be 100% positive, 100% confident. I, I was 100% confident that uh, that April 18th card was going to happen. Never for a second did I doubt it. Um, I can't, you know, because then I'll, I'll you know, ultimately pull your, pull your foot off the pedal a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I say you can't train for a camp like this without the proper time or proper, you know, the proper time because you wake up with a different mindset every single day, you know, and it sucks because it's like, well, why don't you have the mindset every day no matter what? You can't push yourself that hard. If you push yourself yeah. that hard a year, for a year, you're going to break yourself. You're going to be suffering injuries, and you're never going to be 100%. So um, I have my coaches. Like right now, I was going to have another workout. Um, my coach, Trevor, pulled me back. He said, we're just going to do, you know, two Tabatas on an Aerodyne instead of hitting for 40, 45 minutes because the wrestling practice I just did was incredibly hard. So, yep. um, yeah, again, those guys. I never would have pulled it off, and I, I was sad that when he said that, you know. But, you know, I got on the bike and I got to push it, and tomorrow's going to be another hard day. So they do yep. a good job at pulling me back when I need to. That's the same reason um, – I have to have Trevor in my corner because I can't trust myself to protect myself from myself. Uh, Mm. When I'm in there, I've made a choice to die. And, you know, and if someone's going to save me from that, it's going to be Trevor who's been there every single, he's never missed one of my practices. He's, he's running my Tabata. He's running my sprints. He's at every sparring session. So nobody knows me like that man does. And, you know, so that's ultimately that's, you know, who I trust. Does Trevor have both? Save my life in the moment. Trevor have full authority to throw in the towel for you at any moment? Absolutely. I would never question his choices. Just a couple more for you, man. And I know that obviously this this one is the one you're focused on. But I got to believe part of the the appeal of taking this fight is that there's an interim belt attached to it. And interim belts usually mean that you're guaranteed Khabib. Is that how you look at it? If you win this fight, then you are absolutely 1,000% Habib Nurmagomedov's next opponent? When they wrap that belt around me, it's going to feel – it won't be a destination. It'll be a, a map, a map to, to the top. Um, that's how I'm looking at it. It will be nice to, to have a belt wrapped around you, but for me, it won't mean the same. It will never mean – it won't mean that I'm a world champion in the UFC. Um, but, yes, I absolutely when – I, when I beat Tony, I'm fighting Tony next. I mean, I'm, when I beat Tony, I'm fighting Khabib next yeah. uh, because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to try to be the best in the world. Um, and when I fight him, I want him to try to kill me because I won't respect him if he doesn't. Um, and that's what I expect from every athlete that trains with me. That's what I expect. That's why I offer 500 bucks to anybody that could drop me at the body shot in sparring. It's not, it's, it's cause I, I want them to put the pressure on me. I don't, you know, like I really, I need, I'm training for war here. I'm not training for, for a 5k, you know, it's really for war. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, you, I think it's a, it's a mindset. Um, I get very short, short views, short tempered the week of the fight. Um, I'm not a mean person, but you know, I don't really want, when someone asks if you're ready, you know, it really pisses me off. Cause it's like, you know, get out of my face. Get out of my face. I, if I'm not ready, then I'm down. So what are you asking me that for? Yeah. You know, things yeah. like that. But, uh, as an athlete, again, I, I'm preparing for, for, a, for a war. Uh, mm-hmm. When they raided the villages, and, and then when I, when I think about not having proper training, it's like back in the day when someone raided your village, you know, you didn't ask for a timeout and ask for some time. 
you know, you had to go. You had to fight and you had to protect your family. I, right now I'm protecting everything I've ever, ever worked for. Uh, yeah. 20, 27 years of hard work. Um, yeah. And you could take it from me, but I, I promise you, you're going to go through hell. Has that been effective? Has that been an effective strategy in terms of like, have you been able to brainwash yourself to think differently from something that you fought for years? Because for years you've been against short notice fights. So have you, have I'm you been still able against to... short notice fights. I don't want them to think that I'm going to take short notice fights, uh, yeah. but I was never against a short notice fight for a belt. Yeah. Those, yeah. those, those circumstances are so different. Yeah. Um, and ultimately I have been training more, more than I ever have in between the camp. I fought one time in the last year. You know, Barboza was over a year ago. So I fought Cerrone in the last one year, and that, that's it. All three guys that knocked out my last fight, they, they turned around and fought before me. Yeah. Uh, so that sucks. And, you know, it's especially when you're getting these big old checks, it's really hard not to go grub. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but as you get older, you, you know, you kind of understand. You dig your own, you dig your own grave. Yeah. Hey man, last question for you, and you've been very gracious with your time, so so we thank you for it. I know it. how you are. I don't know if this will be the last question, but let's go. I know I'm kind of notorious for that, but I promise this will be the last one. I, it's kind of interesting to me that uh, this curse of Tony and Khabib has become like it's really own, it's its own thing in the mixed martial arts world, right? That like they've tried to book it now five times, and just yeah. the things that have have canceled it have included now, you know, the, the coronavirus. Tony yeah. tripping over cables. I, I mean, it's 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 literally I I hard to even, believe. Unless they want the world to end, they should probably leave that fight alone. Well, I was going to ask you, how do you feel about being the guy that, I mean, obviously Next this is question. not going to, this ain't going to be, well, you didn't let me get my question out. You didn't let me get it out. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you feel about being the guy who potentially just puts an end to this thing? I mean, you you beat Tony. And all of a sudden, it's not like this huge fight where, like, oh, these guys are on the, these winning yeah. streaks. They have to collide. You could kind of put an end to this five years of misery that we've all been going through. Has that crossed your mind at all? Yeah, as a fan, it really uh, – I want to see that fight just as much as anybody. But, you know, to put food on my table, I have to go – you know, I have to I – I really don't – I don't care about that. I will feel a little bit bad because I know how bad people want it. Yeah. But – for me to to act like it'll bother me, it will, it, that would be a lie. I would be so. I would be very. I'm gonna be very happy to royally screw that up. 